Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was all the rave during the 80s and early 90s. A hit TV show, movies, toys, and successful video games on both console and arcade helped the Ninja Turtles become a household name. Stemming out from its arcade success in 1991 was a SNES game that would make Turtles enthusiasts happy. In 1992, Turtles in Time would hit living rooms all over the world with massive success. I for one can remember being glued to my buddy's carpet for hours trying to master this game with him. Konami just knocked it out of the park with this release. The vivid colors and the soundtrack was enough to make kids want to beat down any foot soldier that stepped in their way. Speaking of soundtracks, the SNES version featured the song Pizza Power, which stemmed from the Out of Our Shells live action concert tour. If you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, you need to go check it out on YouTube. It was extremely innovative for the time, but it just didn't age very well whatsoever. Turtles in Time stayed true to not only looking, but feeling like the arcade version. Although an entertaining franchise, the games including Turtles in Time provided challenges that some players just couldn't master. It was nowhere near the difficulty of the original NES version of Ninja Turtles, but Turtles in Time still provided a challenge to all players. With enough practice though, most players should be able to beat it. Turtles in Time was well put together and had great music composed by Mutsuhiko Izumi and also provided a great story. Starting in New York, we have to go through beating up the Foot Clan and Baxter. Getting further, we fight Shredder and he sends the turtles back in time. Fighting through different time periods starting from the prehistoric era and all the way to the far future. We end up in the Technodrome one last time to face Super Shredder. Like most games, there are patterns to watch out for, especially when fighting the bosses of each level. During an era filled with other beat-em-ups, Turtles in Time had to be in the top 10, if not the top 5 in the genre. Looking at how it ranked among its peers was beyond positive. CBR.com ranked it as the best Ninja Turtles game to ever be created. IGN.com ranked it as 39 on their list of best SNES games. I know I beat IGN up quite a bit, but I personally felt they lowballed this one when comparing it to the games that were ahead of it. And then just to add insult to injury, remember when they ranked Super Mario World at number one for quote, best games ever created? Well, on the same list, they had that as number five on top 100 SNES games. If it isn't the best SNES game, how can it then be the best game ever created? It just doesn't make sense, and it's pure insanity at its finest. But uh, getting off the IGN bash fest, Ranker.com has it as number nine of all-time best SNES games. Overall, the game is more than replayable, and people of all ages can enjoy this title for years to come. It's time to jump in and take down the Foot Clan. All right, so here we go, playing as Leonardo. And I wanted to note here, if you guys notice how I'm attacking for the most part, what I'm trying to do is make sure that I'm slightly above or below my enemy when I'm attacking them. Because if you notice, um, like, where the shadows are, I'm usually, I guess I'm trying to stay above or below. The reason is, is I notice, like, if you try going just straight up with an enemy, more often than not, that's when you get hit. It's, it's real weird. And I'm not saying that you'll always get hit, but it's just, it seemed like whenever I tried going heads up with, rather it was a foot soldier or the boss or something like that, I always got nailed. And ironically enough, for how many times I have played this game, I just now noticed that when I was doing this playthrough, and I didn't really pick up on it until a little over probably halfway through the game was when I really noticed it, but... Uh, I will say that that definitely will help you with your strategy long term. And then just another thing to kind of look at, like as you're seeing me uh, progress through each level, is try to not just rush through it, so that way you're not spawning in too many enemies, and just try to take them out, you know, methodically. If it's your first time trying to play through anyways if you're used to how the gameplay is and it's not your first time playing it then you know by all means just go through and just beat the crap out of them i mean you don't have to really take your time but for somebody who might be just trying to learn how to play the game i think that you know slow and steady wins the race you're not on a time time or anything like that 
And then with that foot soldier that is uh, actually throwing that Chinese star, you can actually hit those with your weapon. And then, like what you've seen, um, like when I was trying to say, like try to methodically go through, had we tried to rush and hit those guys that were throwing the Chinese stars, it would have spawned in those purple and blue foot soldiers as well. So we would have been dealing with those guys plus the ones that were throwing those Chinese stars. But you guys will see all that stuff as we progress through. And this level is really not too bad. Is for for a beginning level, I felt that the difficulty level was uh, pretty suiting. It wasn't over the top. Now, to some people, the difficulty on this game might might be pretty strong. It just depends on how you are with beat 'em ups in general, like how you are as a beat 'em up style player. Me, I love beat 'em ups, so these kind of come natural to me. They're not super hard. I mean, yes, they provide a challenge, but it's not over the top hard for me. Now, you'll see examples here as far as trying to take on Baxter. All you gotta do is just kind of dodge his shots here and then wait till he gets on the ground and then just beat the crap out of him. And again, here you'll see him without even realizing it, I'm keeping my shadow either slightly above or slightly above where Baxter's at, so that way I don't have to worry about him you know, trying to hit me or anything like that. And Baxter, as you can see, he's super easy. He's not a very hard boss to beat. You see the pattern there. He'll just shoot a few times, and he comes down to the ground, and once he does that, you just beat the crap out of him, and then that's it. And then it's over and onwards to stage two. All right, so here we are. You can hit that fire hydrant like just like that, so that way you can instantly kill one of the foot soldiers. But again, try to use that throw when you can. Just try to hit him a few times and then throw him off screen. Now, the one thing too you can strategize with here is the, uh, the drop kick or jump kick, whichever you want to call it. I try to utilize that as more of a crowd control type thing, if that makes sense to any of you guys. Like, I'm not using a jump kick to try to deal lethal damage or anything like that, but if I feel I'm getting overwhelmed, I'll try to hurry up and do, like, a drop kick and go back to beating up one of the other foot soldiers and stuff. Like, that's what I'm doing here. Try to do a jump kick and then go back to beating up the other foot soldiers. Then these guys, they're not super hard. Just try to keep them kind of uh, together if you can. And the same similar strategy, you're going to want to try to drop kick and then if you keep them all together, you can drop kick them and then just start attacking the crap out of them. But just be wary as far as they have that rope that'll electrocute you. And then again, you've seen how that one shot. So just try to remember, kind of, kind of like a uh, hit and run type thing is what I do with those things. I just kind of hit them a couple times and then run out of the way. So that way I don't have to worry about getting hit. And then here, you know, same strategy. Like I said, just hit, throw, and then try to just like that drop kick the knock those two over and then start beating the crap out of those ones that were over on the opposite side. It tends, at least to me, it seems to be like the most fitting strategy. It seemed like it was pretty good for myself. And as you can see, I'm doing like I was telling you guys, kind of kind of hit and move, not really trying to just go in and just smash that attack button, you know. And then for that, I'll, I'll try to wait. I should have waited just a, a shade longer, but it didn't matter. It still worked out. But I'll at least wait until those foot soldiers start walking around before getting that bomb pizza box. And right here, don't feel like you have to hurry up and get that pizza unless you are really low on life. But I try to hold on to that one because we're going to be going up against Metalhead here. 
and he's not super hard to fight either. Just got to watch out for a couple things here. But again, try to stay either slightly above or slightly below, because if you try going straight up with him, you're going to get nailed every single time, just about. And then that, you also got all you got to do is just do what I did there. When you start shooting, you just jump ahead. And I wasn't trying to get that pizza there, but unfortunately I didn't really have a choice. I was going to wait until I was a little bit lower on life, and then I was going to get it. And try not to jump kick him too much, because you've seen what happened to me earlier. I got kind of beat up trying to go after him, so I was trying to more or less, when I try to jump, I was trying to jump, and I should have hit like down or whichever direction away from him. And then there it is. Not too terribly bad. And then we go on to the next level. And then the same thing with this part here. Try not to go completely straight with him because that was when I was getting hit. I tried staying slightly above or slightly below. And then try to time out that attack when uh, they're just in reach so that way you don't have to worry about them hitting you because if you wait just a I know it sounds dumb but if you just wait just a fraction longer like if they get too close that's when the uh, the uh, purple ones and stuff will end up hitting you and this part's really not too hard it's just kind of do what I did there just kind of go up a little bit and then back a little bit and Now these guys, you just drop kick them the whole time. And the same thing, trying to try to stay slightly above or slightly below. I think there was a couple times I screwed up and got hit by them. Yeah. I found that that was the best strategy. I have seen people just normal attack them, but for me, it seemed like drop kicking was the best strategy. Now going with the uh, Rat King. I, 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 I never in the past used to have issues with this guy because all you have to do is you stay in between where he shoots the missiles and then you just keep beating the crap out of uh, his vehicle and then you're pretty much then after you get to a certain spot you just, when he starts shooting off those mines you just dodge them and then go right back to it but for whatever reason my timing was a little off it, you know I was still trying to get in there but Overall, that's all you really got to do. It's not super hard. You might lose a life here if you're not paying attention like me, just getting nailed by random missiles. And not. And then right there, I should have jumped instead of being aggressive like that. But in my mind, I'm like, ah, he just has that one sliver left. I'll just get in there and you know, I'll kill him. It's all good. And then I ended up dying. <laughs> And then, of course, you know, I just go in, and then after that, you know, it's going to be an easy, easy win for us there. And there it is. Now we're in the Technodrome. I'm going to get these guys here and do the same thing to kind of the stick and move type feel just kind of knock them around here pretty much do a similar strategy when it comes to the foot clan always kind of try to keep them on one side of the screen like a similar strategy that we've talked about too in other beat em up games. Um, you try to crowd control the best you can and then try to keep the enemies all on one side. And those little, little rat trap things do a similar thing. They're only a one hit kill, 
as far as like as far as you hitting them, not them hitting you, but they're not too hard to keep under control if you're paying attention to what you're doing there. trying to do the same thing here. I was trying to just trigger off a few guys and then get that pizza instead of, you know. I didn't want to go too far off the screen. And these guys are just annoying. I don't know if there is actually a way to time out whatever it needs to be to attack them. I just usually try to get real close to them and then just swing out and kind of mash that attack button the best I can or I'll try to drop kick into them and then start attacking. And it's like, and then after a while, it just kind of triggers off like you can hit them. It's the weirdest thing. And I must have triggered them off the screen because then that popped up. So I was like, oh, all right, I guess they're dead. So then just use that bomb pizza, take out those foot soldiers. And then as we know, those red ones, they'll throw Chinese stars at you and stuff. So you want to try to take those guys out so that way you don't have to worry about any ranged weapons being tossed your way. So you got Toka and Razar. My strategy is to take out Razar first because... Razar will jump on Toka's back and kind of like surf across the screen and like try to smack India and stuff. Because like that, like here it goes. It's like, and it's an annoying thing to try to dodge because it just keeps kind of coming at you. But that's why I try to take out Razar first. And then once you do, all you got to really do is um, just kind of kind of dodge Toka's little ice attack there when he shoots the, shoots those, uh, there it is, like the, the ice beams or whatever. So now all you gotta do is just dodge that and then just beat him up. And he will eventually turn into a shell, excuse me, and then kind of go across the screen and stuff, but it's more manageable to dodge than when Razar's on his back. And you'll see, like, after you hit him so much, he does that little hop. Once he does that hop, just move out of the way. And there you go. And then that's it. And then we have this little elevator sequence that's going to be coming up next. And I try to hold on to that pizza for as long as possible. So just like any other elevator sequence in a fighting game or beat-em-up game, it's more of an endurance battle than anything. They're just going to be constantly being pinned up against the wall against certain enemies and stuff like that. But it's not too terribly hard. <clears throat> Excuse me, nothing like a, you know, Streets of Rage elevator sequence, you know. And then same thing, jump, jump kicks. Definitely work wonders against those things. I couldn't remember when I was playing this. I was like, how many more levels do I got to go up before I walk away? And I didn't want to I didn't want to uh, lose out on that pizza. So I, I was going to say, I think it was right there, yep, that I got the pizza. Because I was like, how many more do I go up? Because I didn't want to go to Shredder and not have enough life, you know. But I figured if I got that pizza, I could manage to not lose too much life for the remainder of the battle. And these guys are perfect to fight in this type of environment because you just pin them up against the wall and then you just beat them up and eventually they'll end up dying. Alright, so here we are going up against Shredder. 
Now all you gotta do is you gotta throw the guys at Shredder if you didn't already know. And I probably should have went over this at the beginning of the game, but how you throw to begin with is you hit them like a stun, and then you get right next to them and just hit the attack button while you're hitting like over, whether it's left or right, whichever way you're facing them. And then at that point, they'll just get tossed at the screen. I remember when I was a little kid, I was frustrated because I had no idea how to throw them at the screen. So I remember a buddy of mine and I would die here like every time we played this game because we couldn't figure out how to throw them at the screen. <laughs> we just kept killing foot soldiers and we're going, how the heck are we supposed to kill Shredder? I don't understand. But yeah, that's all you got to do. It's not really that hard. You just dodge where that little uh, that cursor is. Or crosshairs, rather. So you don't want Shredder to shoot you, and you just kind of got to dodge that little claw. And all the while, you're just kind of trying to do, like I try to say, like just do crowd control, kind of beat up the foot soldiers a little bit, and, you know, there you go. And then Shredder is defeated. I'm sorry, I keep bumping my mic. Allergies are bugging me today. So here we are at the prehistoric level. Watch out for this dinosaur right after these guys drop some rock bombs. There's going to be a running dinosaur right there, so just make sure you stay at the top of the screen to dodge it. And then here we are going to be fighting some more Foot Clan. Foot Clan fellas. And I apologize. Again, I probably should have said this at the beginning, but... You guys don't have any in-game audio because, for whatever reason, I forgot to turn my PC audio on when I was recording this, so I got the video footage, but no music, so or no music, or uh, no sound effects, rather. I had to manually put the music in for you guys, so there was some background background music to my narrating of this nonsense. <laughs> and again, similar thing. Now watch for those stalactites that you see at the top there. Just kind of move just enough to trigger them. And then you can see the shadow where it's going to lay. Now these guys, just kind of jump over them, let them charge at you. And then I try to do the same thing, kind of like a drop kick. And then try to not be straight up with them as far as like face to face. Um, like we were saying, like the strategy is to stay slightly above or slightly below. And that's for the same exact reason. Because when whenever I try to go in heads up with those guys, I just get the crap beat out of me every time. Yeah, those guys that throw the bombs. I try to line up those guys that just block your hits. I, I try to line them up with wherever, wherever those bomb throwing guys are at. So that way, those bomb guys will actually take care of those foot soldiers and just blow them up. Rather than you sitting there trying to just beat the crap out of them and taking 30 years to kill them because they keep blocking your shots. Just like that. And there'll be random spots here where dinosaurs are running through and something like that when they have the foot soldiers on their back. And I can't remember if I ended up dying here at Slash, but he's not really that hard and my brain was farting on me big time because I couldn't remember. I was like, what's the pattern with Slash? And all you have to do is just like let him charge in at you and then... Let him turn his back to you, and then that's it. Because once he turns his back to you, that's how you hit him. But then you just, you'll just you see when he pops up how we got to go about coordinating our attacks with him. And this, it's like riding the struggle bus on this guy because every single time it's like, oh, my God. It's like, what do I got to do to hit you? I'm like right on top of you, and you just block everything. 
and I don't want to waste special attacks on him, you know. So as I'm wasting time here, this is probably something I should have just edited out, but I didn't. Because I just wanted you guys to see me, you know, play through the entire stage. There we go. So now he's dead. <clears throat> and then we got these guys coming up. Do the same thing. Try to... I try to keep them both on the same side and try, if I can, to keep them, like, together. So I'm hitting both of them at the same time. So then here he comes, and I'm going in hot at him because I couldn't remember what the pattern was. But all I have to do is just knock him back and let him come to you. When he does that right there, that charge, you jump over top of him and then hit him in the back. And then that's how you attack him. Because for some reason I kept thinking I had a time out of jump attack, but that's not the case. And then try not to spam your, your button there, your attack button, because when you go and he does that jump, that jump slash thing, you're gonna get hit every single time. So just try to do like, I think it's like a, a three count attack. Yeah, I think this is the part where I finally figured it out. I was like, oh yeah, duh, I gotta hit him from behind. <laughs> like what an idiot. Yeah, at this point I was probably trying to hit him, just kind of knock him back to get him away from me. And then there it was, I'd say I did that, that last hit, and that's when he started beating me up. If I just would have done the other way, I would have been fine, and I wouldn't even have gotten hit. I just would have hit him the three times and then been done with it. And there it is. All right, and then it's over and onwards to... Uh Go on the old pirate ship. Go against Bebop and Rocksteady. And you gotta watch out. You see where those little, like, it looks like band-aids. I don't know what you'd call it. it. just looks like a band-aid, I guess you could say, on that little plank of wood. Make sure not to step on those, because if you do, then that board will come up and smack you in the face. So just be weary of those as you go through this level if you've never played this before. Then those archers, they're only one-hit kills. As far as you hit them once, then they die. And then again, trying to just... Uh, Go through and take care of business with those purple foot soldiers and try not to step on those boards. And try to take out anybody with a weapon like you can first, like that guy that has that, that uh, boomerang thing, of course, and you got these guys with the uh, ninja stars. Get them guys out of there guys with the swords aren't too terribly bad but anything any of the foot soldiers that throw things are definitely ones you want to try to take care of as soon as possible and this part i don't want to say it's tricky but you just got to be aware watch that boat in the background because it does that it'll shoot a cannonball and you got to kind of move out of the way and as long as you stay on the up upper part of the boat you should be fine And then going through here, I should have waited a little bit before using that bomb pizza. Should have rightfully waited until actually the purple foot soldiers showed up because the archers aren't too big of a deal to deal with. I'm not saying that the purple ones are, but I mean, it would have made more sense, you know what I mean? 
And there you just seen I accidentally stepped on that board, causing it to flip up and hit me. But man, the the background music to this level, I don't know, as a kid, it just amped me up. Like, I can remember me and my buddies, like, for just whatever reason, whatever goes through a little boy's brain, I don't know sometimes, but, like, we would just freaking start roughhousing, like, I don't know, it was hilarious. Just one of the many weird quirks about being a little boy <laughs> during this time period. I guess uh, me and my buddies always just found any all reasons just a rough house. I don't know how anybody else was, but that was just one of the many reasons to just start going bananas. Like, oh, it's so, it's so good. <laughs> then, you know, these guys, again, try to keep them together the best you can. And again, do the whole stay above them or below them on the shadows part. Now, with the Rocksteady and Bebop, you only have to kill one of them and I personally went after Bebop in this scenario because he's just kind of kicking it up there. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go after Bebop and try to just dodge Rocksteady. Because it makes the most sense. And sometimes they will hit each other if you line them up just right. Because they don't tell you this, but you only have to kill one of them. You don't have to kill both of them. So try to focus in on one and just take care of business. I mean, if you hit one of the other ones that you're not targeting incidentally, then so be it. But just try to focus on taking out one of them all the way down. And then there you have it. So this level is not too bad as far as the, the overall difficulty of the level. Leatherhead's very easy to beat. And again, it's going to be using that strategy of staying slightly above where his shadows are at and slightly below. Because again, if you do try to go heads up with him, it's going to end up uh, taking you out. And then same thing with these guys trying to keep them both on the same side. And then again, try to stay slightly below or above them. And then doing the old crowd control drop kicking and everything else. In this part, I try to use that that box of looks like fireworks, but it's like dynamite basically to blow those guys up. And I try to like 
the strategy I'm doing here is I'm trying to keep kind of like doing that drop kick. And then this freaking guy just keeps, it times you out to where you're going to keep getting hit every time unless you do what I just did. Felt like an idiot getting nailed by that barrel because there's our pizza right there. My pattern here is just you hit him so many times, he's either going to start throwing lobsters at you or he's going to start throwing knives at you. But as soon as you hit him so much, once you see him hit the floor like that, just kind of walk out of the way and you're fine. See how I'm straight up with him? That's how he's hitting me. So you just go in just like that, and then as soon as he hits the floor, there you go, move again. Let him throw the lobsters at you or crawfish, whatever they are. there if he throws the knives that's just he just jumps up he goes whichever direction then just jump over the knives and then go right back to beating the crap out of him nothing too crazy there I was expecting him to throw the knives there. And then there it is. Here we are in futuristic land. Similar thing, try to stay slightly above or below wherever the Foot Clan's gonna show up. Cause I'm sure you guys seen every time that I was like right in line with them, that's when they beat me down because I almost feel like they almost not all the time but some of the time it's like they miss you when they try to swing and you're slightly above or below but you hit them it's weird guys same similar thing just kind of dodge them a little bit and then try to just go in and drop kick them stay slightly above or below and then they're pretty easy to, to take care of now this is gonna be the part where we fight krang i believe i did edit this out because it takes forever yeah so i'll just edit that part out And then Krang is rather easy on this. It's just drop kick him, and then as soon as you drop kick him, just hit him a few times, and then do the same thing. It's almost like the drop kick kind of stuns him, so that way you can go in there and just beat the crap out of him. And it, as you can see, it doesn't really matter if he's attacking or not, as long as you hit that drop kick on him, you can go in. I feel I don't know if they're random or not but just try to dodge those after Krang throws those things up and 
there it is. Krang is done. And here we are in the last full level, that is. In the Technodrome. And those things, those little uh, round things, I try to take those out pretty quick because they're one-shot kills. I got <clears throat> these guys again. Same thing, try to not go heads up like you just seen me do that. I swear that that's why you get hit. I could be wrong, but I know you guys heard me say this a million times already, but... And that right there was another thing. I should have waited just a shade longer to get that bomb pizza. Because then I would have taken out all those round things on top of those foot soldiers in between. And then going back to our throw strategy here. That's another thing. If you do that slam, I honestly don't know how to do it. It just happens when I try to throw them, and it'll just sometimes it'll do that, or sometimes it'll just throw them. But it helps so much when you're able to do that and take out multiple enemies. I think I ended up dying like literally right before I get a pizza. Memory serves me right on this. So I was trying this those guys, man, they drive me nuts. They throw that shell. I was kind of trying to rush through here because I thought, yep, there it is. I died. I rolled right into the pizza. Oh my gosh. And those guys will just keep spamming that thing at you if you don't get out of the way and you got to watch out for those because you don't want to get hit by those because I believe they freeze you Trying to do a similar strategy with that guy, and I was trying to make sure not to activate too many people. It's one thing I always am weary on whenever I play a beat em up game, is I try to not activate too many guys on one screen. So it's better to, you know, not try to fight seven or eight enemies at once, you know. Getting closer to crying. Gotta beat up some more foot soldiers first. And I always try, if I can, to take out whichever ones have weapons. I know that might that, that might, might go without saying, but that's just kind of what I, in my mind, I need to try to do. Is I'm like, alright, which one of these guys have uh, weapons?
trying to nail that guy with a bomb, and it, but I guess it just it missed. Now, I hate those guys so much. I must have finally triggered him off the screen. I'm not gonna lie though, like my play got a little bit sloppy here towards the end. I did wasn't quite as stiff because I knew I pretty much had it in the bag. I knew I had more than enough lives to to get through without using a continue. But just to put on a show for you guys, I knew I probably should have stiffened up on how well I played. Crank's super easy. Drop kick into him, and then uh, that's that's what I try doing. He's like, I can hit him when he's this low, like normal, but I'll always try, like, you'll see, I'll like, jump kick into him and then start hitting him so that way he doesn't really attack you. Because he'll try to start attacking, but as long as you stay on top of him, you don't got to worry about it. He does start getting a little bit more uh, he starts hovering a little bit higher so you have to kind of drop kick him when he's like really low like that you can just go at him and there it is that's when he starts doing that drop on you but you got to time that out to where when he hits you either attack him with your swords or weapons or you do a jump kick into him So from here, I was pretty, like I said, it's pretty easy. And it's, the irony is his Super Shredder is like the easiest boss in the entire game. He has the most health, but he is literally the easiest boss. You guys will see here shortly after we take care of Krang here. Now Krang's dead, that's off this Super Shredder. So all you gotta do here is wait till when he, you'll see fire going around him. When, as long as he's not shooting the fire rate, I think it's when he turns red, he shoots fire. Any other color, you can go in after him. Like, when he does that, you just go up and you'll start hitting him. goes off and commits suicide and just blows himself up ah, over the rail I go and there it is turtles in time baby one more notch in your retro gaming belt if you haven't already beaten this game and of course Splinter has to make you feel bad and say it's very impressive for such young students but he wants you to beat it on hard mode and then you're a real ninja the final test in your training is that defeat the hard mode and you will be true ninjas.